in what situations do you make decisions in your everyday life? For today's video, you will be introduced to the concept of logic as a science or study of correct reasoning. Vast understanding of logic will allow you to justify real-life situations and make sound and reasonable decisions. At the end of this video, you are expected to determine the truth value of the different logical operators. Next is to symbolize proposition and vice versa. And last, use truth value of the different logical operators to determine the truth value of real-life arguments. Decisions are what make up the study of logic. And as defined, it is a declarative sentence that is either true or false, but not both. So as a declarative sentence, it should state an information. It can't be a question, an instruction, or an opinion. So we represent P if a proposition is true and F if it is false. So these are known as the truth value. And in fact, true and false are the numerical constants in logic. In logic, variables are used to present propositions in the same way that we use variables to represent numbers in algebra. And the most common variables used are P, Q, and R. An activity on which statement or statements below is or are considered as a proposition. Number 1, 4, 5, 7, 8, and 9 are considered to be a proposition since these are a declarative sentence and it is either true or false. Two is not considered as a proposition because this is an interrogative sentence. Number three is an imperative sentence because it gives a command. Also number six is an exclamatory sentence and number ten is an interrogative sentence. A proposition has two types. First, Simple proposition A proposition is considered to be simple if it cannot be broken down any further into other component propositions. Example, Mindanao is an island in the Philippines. My seatmate will get a perfect score in the logic exam. So this proposition is considered to be a simple one because it expresses a single thought. No, It is not composed of any other propositions. And just like a simple sentence, it only has one subject and one predicate. Okay? Compound proposition is a proposition formed from simple propositions using logical operators or some combination of logical operators. So here class, in compound proposition, this contains two or more simple propositions that are put together using logical connective words. Or logical operators so logical operators these are words okay that are used either to combine two or more simple statements together to form a new single statement or to modify the meaning of the proposition so example of that or here's some logical operators we have not and or if then what else you also have if and only if if and so on so the simplest logical operator is the negation operator which is denoted by these symbols. So a negation is a simple proposition that denies the truth of the given proposition. So for example, we have this proposition P um, that honey is a girl. So when we negate this proposition, we simply deny the truth. Okay. So meaning class, we can say that honey is not a girl which is denoted by this symbol negation of P or not P. So when we negate, we can insert not into the given proposition. Or you can also express it as, it is not true that honey is a girl. This statement also negates the truth of the given proposition. Or you can also say that honey is a boy, which is the opposite of a girl. Or you can also say that it is false that honey is a girl. So, if our given proposition is a true proposition, then of course, when we negate that proposition, it becomes false. And a true table, which is represented by this, this represents the relationship between the truth values of propositions and compound propositions formed from those propositions given. So, since a negation denies the truth of the given proposition, that is, when a proposition is true, then the negation statement is false. 
And whenever the proposition is false or when the given proposition is false, then its negation is true. So class, take note that it is a common mistake to assume that the proposition negation of P is automatically false just because it involves a negation. However, class, negation of P can be true and this happens when the given proposition is false. Okay? The next logical operator is conjunction, which is denoted by this symbol. So, it is a proposition formed by combining two propositions called the conjuncts with the word and or its equivalent, but, yet, while, and so on, or etc. So, if we have this proposition P, mass is a solemn celebration, and proposition Q, students should behave during mass. So, if we combine these propositions by the word and, then a new proposition is formed, which is this. So, in symbol that is P and Q, mass is a solemn celebration and students should behave during mass. We can also have this uh, proposition or we can also have this combined proposition. We use the word but. So, P but Q meaning mass is a solemn celebration but students should behave during mass. Or you can also use yet and while. In ordinary language, these sentences have different sets, right? However, in logic, we are only interested in whether the proposition is true or not and on how the truth value of the compound proposition or a conjunction in this case depends on the truth value of its simple component. In logic, all these statements can be represented by the conjunction denoted by this symbol. Another example for conjunction is we have Proposition P, LaSalle Academy is a Catholic institution which is a true proposition. And Proposition Q, Sermon is a science teacher which is a false proposition because Sermon is a math teacher. So let's express the following conjunctions as English sentences are in symbols. So for number one, that is LaSalle Academy is a Catholic institution and Sermon is a science teacher. Number two, please take note, class, that we negate the proposition Q. So, meaning that is, La Salle Academy is a Catholic institution and Sermon is not a science teacher. So, we inserted in not because we negate this proposition here. Or we can also say, La Salle Academy is a Catholic institution, yet Sermon is not a science teacher. And when you symbolize proposition also, class, you need to put proper punctuations and negation if necessary. Just like, for example, 2 plus negative 3, diba? We tend to close a parenthesis for negative 3 for us, not, for us not to be confused. So, in logic, we need some sort of order of operations also. So, that is why we put a parenthesis. Okay? Uh, so, for number 3, uh, La Salle Academy is not a Catholic institution. So, meaning we negate the uh, proposition P. And sermon teaches math subjects, so meaning we also negate the proposition Q. And in symbol, that is not P and not Q. For number four, while sermon is a science teacher, La Salle Academy is not a Catholic institution. So as observed class, we can also say na La Salle Academy is not a Catholic institution, while sermon is a science teacher. So that is why it is denoted by this symbol, not P and Q. And when can we say that these statements are true or false? So we have this truth table for conjunction. Observe that the first two columns contain all the possible combination of truth values of P and Q. So we started with both having true as their individual truth values and ended with having both false. Huh? So the third column here reflects that P and Q is true when both P and Q are true. Otherwise, it is false. Or, if at least one of the conjuncts is false, then the conjunction is false. So, the third logical operator is called the disjunction and it is denoted by this symbol. So, it is a proposition formed by combining two propositions called the disjunct with the word or. So, for example, we have the proposition P, all right angles are congruent which is a true proposition. We also have every trapezoid is a parallelogram, which is a false proposition because 
a trapezoid consists only of one pair of parallel lines. So, isang pares lang. Yung parallelogram kasi class is two pairs. So, if we combine these two propositions in a disjunction, so we have now, we use the word or, or we insert the word or to combine these two propositions. So, we have now this new proposition, all right angles are congruent or every trapezoid is a parallelogram. So, meaning class, a disjunction allows us to express alternatives. Okay, now let's proceed to our next examples. Suppose we have propositions P, Q, and R for P, that is Anna has a date with John. Q for Jose is sleeping and R is Elmer is eating. So let's translate the following symbols into its corresponding English sentences. So for number one, that is Anna has a date with John or Jose is sleeping. So we've inserted uh, a word here or because we are using the disjunction symbol. Next, that is either Jose is sleeping or Elmer is not eating. So we've inserted a word not because we negate the proposition R. Okay? And next, we have either Anna has a date with John or Jose is sleeping or Elmer is eating. So as observed, there is a parenthesis that combines the propositions Q and R. So when we translate that into its propositional statement, then we place a comma here that indicates which simple statements are grouped together. So in this case, propositions Q and R are grouped together. So that is why there is a comma before these propositions. Okay? Okay, next, we have these statements and then we will convert this one into its corresponding symbols. We have Anna has a date with John or Jose is sleeping, comma, or Elmer is eating. So based from this proposition, we need to group this proposition or this statement, Anna has a date with John or Jose is sleeping. So in symbol class, that is, we have this parenthesis, P or Q, parenthesis, because we are combining or we have, um, we are grouping these statements together. And then, or, R. Okay? Next, we have Anna has a date with John and Jose is sleeping, comma, or Elmer is eating. So, again, we need to group these simple statements and we need to put a parenthesis um, with its corresponding um, variables. So, we have now this proposition or this um, symbol. We have P and Q parenthesis because we are grouping these simple statements here. And then or, so this is the symbol for or, and then Elmer is eating, so we are using the variable R. For number six, Anna has a date with John, or Jose is sleeping and Elmer is eating. So take note that there is a comma, so we need to group together these simple statements here, Jose is sleeping and Elmer is eating. So this is now its corresponding um, symbols. So we have P, or and then Q and R. So we place a parenthesis here. Okay? And last, Anna has a date with John and Jose is sleeping, comma, or Anna has a date with John and Elmer is eating. So this is its corresponding symbols. So for Anna has a date with John and Jose is sleeping, so we are grouping this together. So that is why we put or we place a parenthesis from its corresponding variables. So we have P and Q. So this is the symbol for N. And then we have OR. Anna has a date with John and Elmer is eating. So this is the truth table for disjunction. So as observed class, the disjunction will only be false when both of the propositions are false. So the rest of the combinations of truth values are true. So so meaning, if one of the disjunct is true, then the disjunction is true. Otherwise, it is false. Okay? So let's find the truth value of the proposition given this scenario. One Friday night, Jose is busy eating while Elmer is studying for their logic exam. Meanwhile, Anna just tweeted a picture of herself with John while eating dinner in a resto. So suppose we have these propositions P, Q, R. Let's identify the truth value given the scenario below. 
for proposition P that is a true proposition because on the given scenario, Anna just tweeted a picture of herself with John while eating dinner in a resto. So meaning, Anna has a date with John. For proposition Q, that is a false proposition because in the given scenario, Jose is busy eating and not sleeping. And then for proposition R, that is still a false proposition because Elmer is studying for their logic exam and not eating. Okay? So let's identify now the truth value of this proposition. For proposition P, that is a true proposition. So when we negate that one, that becomes a false proposition. And then copy the connectors we have for disjunction and conjunction. And then for proposition Q, that is a false proposition. And at the same time for R, we know that in conjunction, if both of the conjuncts are false, then the conjunction is false. And in disjunction, if both of the disjuncts are false, then the disjunction is false. So the truth value of the proposition is false. So that's it for today. I hope you've learned something. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video, which will discuss unconditional and biconditional.